I'm Dr. Jerome Pagani. And I'm Dr. Craig Joseph. And this is Doc Talk. On November 15th, President Biden signed the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. This is a bill that's meant to restore American competitiveness by building key pieces of infrastructure. $65 billion of that bill has been set aside for broadband access. That means it's meant to provide services for those who have no broadband, who are underserved because they live in communities with low, slow access, or those who can't afford it. $2.6 billion has been specifically earmarked for broadband access in rural areas, and there's an additional fund to help those who can't afford high-speed internet access. Broadband availability has been called a super social determinant of health and that access to information and online services is pivotal to take advantage of modern healthcare. Rural America widely suffers from inequities like shortages of healthcare providers, the need to travel long distances to see physicians, and a high proportion of low-income populations that can't easily take off time from work. Improved access to the internet means that telehealth, remote patient monitoring, asynchronous communication with caregivers, and more patient education tools are within reach for folks who just can't access those things today. The digital divide refers to the chasm between those who have access to digital tools and connectivity and those that don't. It's estimated that about 21 to 40 million people in the U.S. fall into that gap. Now there are about 57 million people in rural America and 60% of them refer, report that they have no high-speed internet access. 40% of households earning $30,000 or less a year say that they have no computer at home and limited to no connectivity. And contrast that with those who make $100,000 or more who report having high-speed broadband access and a variety of tools to access the internet. The pandemic helped make crystal clear what many of us in the healthcare IT world have already known. Technology by itself rarely solves problems. We must implement the technology in a usable and user-friendly way to improve care. Much like the last mile problem in package delivery, we must acknowledge that getting broadband into the house is not the final step. To help patients, we'll often need to provide experts who can set up the tech and explain how to use it. Further, we should encourage pharmacies to continue their pivot to not only providing medications, but more testing and advisory services. As Dr. Joseph said, technology by itself isn't gonna solve the health equity issues that are exacerbated by the digital divide. A complete solution needs to take into account the people who will be giving and receiving care using those digital tools. That means education and ongoing support are going to be crucial components for any health systems looking to build digital tools that are going to be supported by this new infrastructure. In any case, adding broadband access with decent standards for minimum speeds creates a strong opportunity for telehealth, virtual care, and all the other innovations that fall within digital health. Is that a stethoscope? I gotta get to the OR stat. Aren't you a pediatrician? Yeah.